Nagorno-Karabakh, officially the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, NKR, Armenian, Lernayan Garabagh Hihan Rapatatyun, Artsakh Republic, or Republic of Artsakh, Armenian, Artsakh Hihan Rapatatyun, is a republic in the South Caucasus recognized by three non-UN states. Recognized by the United Nations as part of Azerbaijan, Nagorno-Karabakh controls most of the territory of the former Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast and some of the surrounding area, giving it a border with Armenia to the west and Iran to the south. The predominantly Armenian-populated region of Nagorno-Karabakh was claimed by both the Azerbaijan Democratic Republic and the First Republic of Armenia when both countries became independent in 1918. After the Soviet Union established control over the area, it created the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast NKAO, within the Azerbaijan SSR in 1923. In the final years of the Soviet Union, the region re-emerged as a source of dispute between Armenia and Azerbaijan. In 1991, a referendum held in the NKAO and the neighboring Shahumian region resulted in a declaration of independence. Large-scale ethnic conflict led to the 1991-1994 Nagorno-Karabakh War, which ended with a ceasefire that left the current borders. The Nagorno-Karabakh Republic is a presidential democracy with a unicameral parliament. The de facto country is very mountainous, averaging 1,097 meters, 3,599 feet, above sea level. The population is predominantly Christian, with most Christians being affiliated with the Armenian Apostolic Church. Several historical monasteries are popular with tourists, mostly from the Armenian diaspora, as most travel can take place only between Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. Nagorno-Karabakh is a presidential democracy. The executive power primarily belongs to the president. According to the NKR constitution the president appoints and dismisses the prime minister. The National Assembly of Nagorno-Karabakh is the parliament, forming a unicameral legislature. It has 33 members who are elected for five-year terms. The current president is Bako Sahakian. In the recent presidential elections held on July 19, 2012 the incumbent President Sahakian has been re-elected for the second term. None of the elections are recognized by any governing body and are condemned by Minsk Group observant as well Azerbaijan, Turkey and OIC countries have more harsh stance by saying that the elections delude the peace talks. The Nagorno-Karabakh Republic has a multi-party system, as of 2009, the American NGO Freedom House ranks the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic above the republics of Armenia and Azerbaijan with respect to civil and political rights. Three organizations have members in the parliament, Democratic Party of Artsakh has 18 members, Free Motherland has 8 members, and the Movement 88 Alliance has 3 members. A number of non-partisan candidates also take part in elections, and with some success, in 2005, Eight of the 33 members to the National Assembly took their seat without running under the banner of established political parties in the Republic. Constitution On November 3, 2006, the then President of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic Arkady Gukasian signed a decree to carry out a referendum on a draft Nagorno-Karabakh Constitution. This was held on December 10 of the same year among the citizens of Nagorno-Karabakh, which voted overwhelmingly in favor of a new constitution. According to official preliminary results, with a turnout of 87.2%, as many as 98.6% of voters approved the constitution. The first article of the document describes the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic as a sovereign, democratic legal and social state. More than 100 non-governmental international observers and journalists who monitored the poll evaluated it positively, stating that it was held to a high international standard. However, the poll was criticized sharply by intergovernmental organizations such as the European Union, OSCE, and Guam, which have all rejected the referendum, deeming it illegitimate. The EU announced it was aware that a constitutional referendum has taken place, but emphasized its stance that only a negotiated settlement between Azerbaijan and ethnic Armenians can bring a lasting solution. Secretary General of the Council of Europe Terry Davis asserted that the poll will not be recognized and is therefore of no consequence. In a statement, 
the OSCE chairman in office Carol de Gucket voiced his concern that the vote may prove potentially harmful to the ongoing conflict settlement process, which, he said, has shown visible progress and is at a promising juncture. The outcome was also criticized by Turkey, which traditionally supports Azerbaijan because of common ethnic Turkic roots, and has historically had severe tensions with Armenia. Foreign Relations The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is based in Stepanakert. The Nagorno-Karabakh Republic operates five permanent missions and one Bureau of Social Politic Information in France. The NKR permanent missions exist in Armenia, Australia, France, Germany, Russia, the United States, and one for Middle East countries based in Beirut. The goals of the offices are to present the Republic's positions on various issues, to provide information and to facilitate the peace process. The Nagorno-Karabakh Republic is a member of the Community for Democracy and Rights of Nations, commonly known as the Commonwealth of Unrecognized States. Military According to the NKR Constitution the Army is under the civilian command of the government. The Nagorno-Karabakh Defense Army was officially established on May 9, 1992 as a defense against Azerbaijan. It succeeded in fighting the Azerbaijani army to a ceasefire on May 12, 1994. Currently the Nagorno-Karabakh Defense Army consists of around 18,0020,000 officers and soldiers. However, only 8,500 citizens from Nagorno-Karabakh serve in the NK army, some 10,000 come from Armenia. There are also 177-316 tanks. 256 324 additional fighting vehicles, and 291 322 guns and mortars. Armenia supplies arms and other military necessities to Karabakh. Several battalions of Armenia's army are deployed directly in the Karabakh zone on occupied Azerbaijani territory. The Nagorno Karabakh Defense Army fought the Battle of Shusha in 1992, involving the opening of the Lachin Corridor between the Republic of Armenia and Nagorno Karabakh. 1992, and the defense of the Martakert Front from 1992-1994. The region of Nagorno-Karabakh is considered to be one of the most heavily mined regions of the former Soviet Union. Mines were laid from 1991 to 1994 by both conflicting parties in the Nagorno-Karabakh War. The United Nations and the U.S. have estimated the number of mines in Nagorno-Karabakh at 100,000. There have been many civilian casualties resulting from the land mines. The United Nations Development Programme, UNDP, claims that 123 people have been killed and over 300 injured by landmines near the disputed enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh since a 1994 truce ended a six-year conflict between ethnic Armenian and Azerbaijani forces. The Halo Trust UK-based demining NGO, is the only other organisation conducting demining in Nagorno-Karabakh. Today, Nagorno-Karabakh is a de facto independent state, calling itself the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. It has close relations with the Republic of Armenia and uses the same currency, the DRAM. According to Human Rights Watch, from the beginning of the Karabakh conflict, Armenia provided aid, weapons, and volunteers. Armenian involvement in Karabakh escalated after a December 1993 Azerbaijani offensive. The Republic of Armenia began sending conscripts and regular army and interior ministry troops to fight in Karabakh. The politics of Armenia and the de facto NKR are so intertwined that a former president of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, Robert Kacharyan, became first the Prime Minister, 1997, and then the President of Armenia, 1998-2008. However, Armenian governments have repeatedly resisted internal pressure to unite the two, due to ongoing negotiations under the auspices of the OSCE Minsk Group. In his case study of Eurasia, Dov Lynch of the Institute for Security Studies of WEU believes that Karabakh's independence allows the new Armenian state to avoid the international stigma of aggression, despite the fact that Armenian troops fought in the war between 1991-94 and continue to man the line of contact between Karabakh and Azerbaijan. Lynch also cites that the strength of the Armenian armed forces, and Armenia's strategic alliance with Russia, are seen as key shields protecting the Karabakh state by the authorities in Stepanakert. Some sources consider Nagorno-Karabakh as functioning de facto as part of Armenia.
At present, the mediation process is at a standstill, with the most recent discussions in Rambouillet, France, yielding no agreement. Azerbaijan has officially requested Armenian troops to withdraw from all disputed areas of Azerbaijan outside Nagorno-Karabakh, and that all displaced persons be allowed to return to their homes before the status of Karabakh can be discussed. Armenia does not recognize Azerbaijani claims to Nagorno-Karabakh, and believes the territory should have self-determination. Both the Armenian and Karabakh governments note that the independence of the NKR was declared around the time the Soviet Union dissolved and its members became independent. The Armenian government insists that the government of Nagorno-Karabakh be part of any discussions on the region's future, and rejects ceding occupied territory or allowing refugees to return before talks on the region's status. Representatives of Armenia, Azerbaijan, France, Russia and the United States met in Paris and in Key West, Florida, in early 2001. Despite rumors that the parties were close to a solution, the Azerbaijani authorities both during Haydar Aliyev's period of office, and after the accession of his son Ilham Aliyev in the October 2003 elections have firmly denied that any agreement was reached in Paris or Key West. Shushi. Further talks between the Azerbaijani and Armenian presidents, Ilham Aliyev and Robert Kacharyan, were held in September 2004 in Astana, Kazakhstan, on the sidelines of the Commonwealth of Independent States, CIS, summit. Reportedly, one of the suggestions put forward was the withdrawal of the occupying forces from the Azeri territories adjacent to Nagorno-Karabakh and then holding referendums, plebiscites, in Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan proper regarding the future status of the region. On 10 and February 11, 2006, Kacharyan and Aliyev met in Rambouillet, France, to discuss the fundamental principles of a settlement to the conflict. Contrary to the initial optimism, the Rambouillet talks did not produce any agreement, with key issues such as the status of Nagorno-Karabakh and whether Armenian troops would withdraw from Kalbajar still being contentious. Talks were held at the Polish Embassy in Bucharest in June 2006. Again, American, Russian, and French diplomats attended the talks that lasted over 40 minutes. Earlier, Armenian President Kacharyan announced that he was ready to continue dialogue with Azerbaijan for the settlement of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict and with Turkey on establishing relations without any preconditions. According to Armenian Foreign Minister, Vardan Oskanyan, no progress was made at this latest meeting. Both presidents failed to reach a consensus on the issues from the earlier Rambouillet conference. He noted that the Kacharyan Aliyev meeting was held in a normal atmosphere. Nevertheless, he added, the foreign ministers of the two countries are commissioned to continue talks over settlement of the Nagorno Karabakh conflict and try to find common points before the next meeting of the presidents. The major disagreement between both sides at the Bucharest conference was the status of Karabakh. Azerbaijan's preferred solution would be to give Karabakh the highest status of autonomy adopted in the world. Armenia, on the other hand, endorsed a popular vote by the inhabitants of Karabakh to decide their future, a position that was also taken by the international mediators. On June 27, the Armenian foreign minister said both parties agreed to allow the residents of Karabakh to vote regarding the future status of the region. The Azerbaijani Ministry of Foreign Affairs officially refuted that statement. According to Azeri opposition leader Isa Gambar, however, Azerbaijan did indeed agree to the referendum. Still, nothing official has confirmed this yet. The ongoing Prague process overseen by the OSCE Minsk Group was brought into sharp relief in the summer of 2006 with a series of rare public revelations seemingly designed to jumpstart the stalled negotiations. After the release in June of a paper outlining its position, which had until then been carefully guarded, U.S. State Department official Matthew Bryza told Radio Free Europe that the Minsk Group favored a referendum in Karabakh that would determine its final status. The referendum, in the view of the OSCE, should take place not in Azerbaijan as a whole, but in Nagorno-Karabakh only. This was a blow to Azerbaijan, and despite talk that their government might eventually seek a more sympathetic forum for future negotiations, this has not yet happened.
On December 10, 2007 Azerbaijan's Deputy Foreign Minister said Azerbaijan would be prepared to conduct anti-terrorist operations in Nagorno-Karabakh against alleged bases of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK. Armenian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Vladimir Karapeshin previously rejected the allegations as fabricated and suggested the accusations of the PKK presence were a form of provocation. In 2008, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev stated that Nagorno-Karabakh will never be independent, the position is backed by international mediators as well, Armenia has to accept the reality and that in 1918, Yerevan was granted to the Armenians. It was a great mistake. The Khanate of Yerevan was the Azeri territory, the Armenians were guests here. On the other hand, in 2009 President of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic Bako Sahakian declared that Artsakh will never be a part of Azerbaijan. NKR security should never be an article of commerce either. As to other issues, we are ready to discuss them with Azerbaijan. In 2010 President of Republic of Armenia Serge Sargsyan in his speech in the Chatham House of the British Royal Institute of International Affairs declared that Karabakh was never a part of independent Azerbaijan it was annexed to Azerbaijan by a decision of the Soviet Union party body. The people of Karabakh never put up with this decision, and upon the first opportunity, seceded from the Soviet Union fully in line with the laws of the Soviet Union and the applicable international law. On March 14, 2008, the United Nations General Assembly passed a non-binding resolution by a vote of 39 to 7, with 100 abstentions reaffirming Azerbaijan's territorial integrity, expressing support for that country's internationally recognized borders and demanding the immediate withdrawal of all Armenian forces from all occupied territories there. The resolution was supported mainly by members of the OIC and Guam, both of which Azerbaijan is a member, as well as other nations facing breakaway regions. The resolution was opposed by all three members of the OSCE Minsk Group. On May 20, 2010, the European Parliament adopted a resolution on the need for an EU strategy for the South Caucasus, which states that EU must pursue a strategy to promote stability, prosperity and conflict resolution in the South Caucasus. The resolution calls on the parties to intensify their peace talk efforts for the purpose of a settlement in the coming months, to show a more constructive attitude and to abandon preferences to perpetuate the status quo created by force and with no international legitimacy, creating in this way instability and prolonging the suffering of the war-affected populations, condemns the idea of a military solution and the heavy consequences of military force already used, and calls on both parties to avoid any further breaches of the 1994 ceasefire. The resolution also calls for withdrawal of Armenian forces from all occupied territories of Azerbaijan, accompanied by deployment of international forces to be organized with respect of the UN Charter in order to provide the necessary security guarantees in a period of transition, which will ensure the security of the population of Nagorno-Karabakh and allow the displaced persons to return to their homes and further conflicts caused by homelessness to be prevented, and states that the EU believes that the position according to which Nagorno-Karabakh includes all occupied Azerbaijani lands surrounding Nagorno-Karabakh should rapidly be abandoned. It also notes that an interim status for Nagorno-Karabakh could offer a solution until the final status is determined and that it could create a transitional framework for peaceful coexistence and cooperation of Armenian and Azerbaijani populations in the region. On June 26, 2010, the presidents of the OSCE Minsk Group CO Chair Countries, France, Russia and United States made a joint statement, reaffirming their commitment to support the leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan as they finalize the basic principles for the peaceful settlement of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. After Armenia established diplomatic relations with Tuvalu in March 2012, it was speculated in the press that Armenia was attempting to persuade the small island nation to be the first state to recognize Nagorno-Karabakh's independence. Tuvalu recognized two other disputed states in the Caucasus, Abkhazia and South Ossetia, the previous year. Recognition Process Human Rights the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict has resulted in the displacement of 528,000 Azerbaijanis from Armenian territories, this figure does not include newborn children of these IDPs, including Nagorno-Karabakh, 
and 220,000 Azeris, 18,000 Kurds, and 3,500 Russians fled from Armenia to Azerbaijan from 1988 to 1989. The Azerbaijani government has estimated that 63% of internally displaced persons, IDPs, lived below the poverty line as compared to 49% of the total population. About 154,000 lived in the capital, Baku. According to the International Organization for Migration, 40,000 IDPs lived in camps, 60,000 in underground dugout shelters, and 20,000 in railway cars. 40,000 IDPs lived in EU-funded settlements and UNRWA provided housing for another 40,000. Another 5,000 IDPs lived in abandoned or rapidly deteriorating schools. Others lived in trains, on roadsides in half-constructed buildings, or in public buildings such as tourist and health facilities. Tens of thousands lived in seven tent camps where poor water supply and sanitation caused gastrointestinal infections, tuberculosis, and malaria. The Azerbaijani government has been unwilling to integrate the IDPs into the rest of the population as this could be interpreted as acceptance of the permanent loss of Nagorno-Karabakh. The government required IDPs to register their place of residence in an attempt to better target the limited and largely inadequate national and international assistance due to the Armenian-advocated and U.S.-imposed restrictions on humanitarian aid to Azerbaijan. Many IDPs were from rural areas and found it difficult to integrate into the urban labor market. Many international humanitarian agencies reduced or ceased assistance for IDPs citing increasing oil revenues of the country. The infant mortality among displaced Azerbaijani children is three-four times higher than in the rest of the population. The rate of stillbirth was 88.2 per 1,000 births among the internally displaced people. The majority of the displaced have lived in difficult conditions for more than 13 years. 280,000 persons virtually all ethnic Armenians who fled Azerbaijan during the 1988-1993 war over the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh were living in refugee-like circumstances in Armenia. Some left the country, principally to Russia. Their children born in Armenia acquire citizenship automatically. Their numbers are thus subject to constant decline due to departure, and a registration required for naturalization. Of these, about 250,000 fled Azerbaijan proper, areas outside Nagorno-Karabakh, approximately 30,000 came from Nagorno-Karabakh. All were registered with the government as refugees at year's end. Geography The Nagorno-Karabakh Republic is mountainous, a feature which has given it its name from the Russian former mountainous slash highland Karabakh. It is 11,500 square kilometers, 4,440 square miles, in area, bordering Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Iran. The highest peaks in the country are Mount Mrav, 3,340 meters, 10,958 feet, and Mount Kyrs 2,725 meters, 8,940 feet. The largest water body is the Sarsang Reservoir, and the major rivers are the Turtur and Kakan rivers. The country is on a plateau which slopes downwards towards the east and southeast, with the average altitude being 3,600 feet 1,097 m, above sea level. Most rivers in the country flow towards the Artsakh Valley. The climate is mild and temperate. The average temperature is 11 degrees Celsius. 52 degrees Fahrenheit, which fluctuates annually between 22 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, in July and 1 degree C, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, in January. The average precipitation can reach 71 centimeters, 28 in, in some regions, and it is foggy for over 100 days a year. Over 2,000 kinds of plants exist in Nagorno-Karabakh and more than 36% of the country is forested. The plant life on the steppes is mostly semi-desert vegetation, and alpine and tundra environments can be found above the forest in the highlands and mountains. Administrative Divisions The Nagorno-Karabakh Republic has eight administrative divisions. Their territories include the five districts of the former Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast, NKAO, the Shahumayan district in the Azerbaijan SSR which is currently under Azerbaijani control, 
and the seven district around the former NKAO that are under the control of the NKR forces. Following the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic's declaration of independence, the Azerbaijani government abolished the NKAO and created Azerbaijani districts in its place. As a result, some of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic's divisions correspond with the Azerbaijani districts, while others have different borders. The Nagorno-Karabakh Republic claims Shahumian, which was not part of the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast. Representatives from Shahumian declared independence along with Nagorno-Karabakh, and the proclamation of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic includes the Shahumian region within its borders. Unlike the rest of Nagorno-Karabakh, Shahumian remains under Azerbaijani control. Demographics In 2002, the country's population was 145,000, made up of 95% Armenians and 5% others. In March 2007, the local government announced that its population had grown to 138,000. The annual birth rate was recorded at 2,200 per year, an increase from nearly 1,500 in 1999. OSCE report, released in March 2011, estimates the population of the seven occupied territories surrounding Nagorno-Karabakh to be 14,000, and states there has been no significant growth in the population since 2005. Until 2000, the country's net migration was at a negative. For the first half of 2007, 1,010 births and 659 deaths were reported, with a net emigration of 27. Most of the Armenian population in the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic is Christian and belongs to the Armenian Apostolic Church which is an Oriental Orthodox Church. Certain Eastern Orthodox and Evangelical denominations also exist, other religions include Judaism. However, military authorities prohibited any Christian sect activity in Nagorno-Karabakh, for the reason that they would preach pacifism among population. Notably the telecommunications sector was developed with Karabakh Telecom investing millions of dollars in mobile telephony, spearheaded by a Lebanese company. Copper and gold mining has been advancing since 2002 with development and launch of operations at Dreamban Deposit. Approximately 27-28 thousand tons, wet weight, of concentrates are produced with average copper content of 19-21% and gold content of 32-34 g-t. The banking system is also flourishing with Artsakh Bank, the State Bank, and a number of Armenian banks. The Republic presently uses the Armenian dram. Wine growing and processing of agricultural products, particularly wine, i.e. storage of wine, wine stuff, cognac alcohol, is one of the prioritized directions of the economic development. Tourism Karmershika The Republic is developing a tourist industry geared to Armenia and the Armenian diaspora. The Republic has been showing a major increase in tourists over the last several years, which keeps growing because of Karabakh's many cultural sites. There are eight hotels in Stepanakert. The Artsakh Development Agency says 4,000 tourists visited Nagorno-Karabakh Republic in 2005. The figures rose to 8,000 in 2010, excluding visitors from Armenia. The agency cooperates with the Armenia Tourism Development Agency, ATDA, as Armenia is the only way tourists, mainly Armenians, can access Karabakh. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Karabakh informs of continuous expansion NKR visitors' geography. The Tourism Development Agency of Nagorno-Karabakh was established in Yerevan as a non-governmental organization in Republic of Armenia to promote tourism further in Nagorno-Karabakh. It makes preparations for tour operators, travel agencies, and journalists covering the region and arranges for hotel services, shopping, catering, recreation centers. Tourist attractions include Gonze Sar Monastery, main tourist attraction. Gazan Ketsats Cathedral of the Holy Savior. Church of the Holy Mother of God Konach's Ham. Amaras Monastery. Tsitsernavank Monastery. St. Yeghisharakil Monastery. Dadavank Monastery. Ktikavank Monastery Briyegtsi Monastery Yeritsmank Ants Katerovank Monastery Other tourist attractions include 
The ancient city of Tigranakert, one of four cities that were founded in the 1st century BC in opposite corners of Armenia and named after King Tigran II the Great, ruler of the short-lived Armenian Empire. Tigranakert, which has been undergoing archaeological excavations since 2005, is located in Mardakert district. Fort Mayraberd, 10th-18th centuries, served as the primary bulwark against Turco-nomadic incursions from the eastern steppe. The fort is found to the east of the region's capital city of Stepanakert. Gofariga Mosque, 18th century, a mosque located in the city of Shusha. Janapar is a marked trail through mountains, valleys, and villages of Nagorno-Karabakh, with monasteries and fortresses along the way. The trail is broken into day hikes, which will bring tourists to a different village each night. The paths have existed for centuries, but now are marked specifically for hikers. The Himnikan Janapar, Backbone Trail, marked in 2007, leads from the northwest region of Shahumian to the southern town of Hadrut. Side trails and mini trails take one to additional parts of Karabakh. The important sites passed along this hike include Dadavank Monastery, Gonze Sar Monastery, Shushi, the Karkar Canyon with its high cliffs, Zontik Waterfall, and the ruins of Hunat and Ktikavant Monastery. Transportation The Liberators Boulevard, Stepanakert The transportation system damaged by the conflict has been noticeably improved during the last several years, the North-South Karabakh motorway alone has largely facilitated in the development of the transportation system. The 169 kilometers, 105 miles, Hadrut Stepanakur Taskar and Martakert motorway, the locals say, is the lifeline of Karabakh. $25 million donated during the Hayastan All Armenian Foundation telethons have been allotted for the construction of the road. The route from the Armenian capital Yerevan to the Nagorno Karabakh capital Stepanakert now takes around three hours instead of the former eight nine hours. The sole civilian airport of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, located about 8 kilometers, 5 miles, east of the capital, has been closed since the onset of the war more than 20 years ago. However, the government is pressing ahead with plans to reopen the airport by early 2011, and raised about 1 billion drams, $2.8 million, for its reconstruction from unspecified charitable sources. It began building a new airport terminal and repairing the runway in late 2009. It is expected that Karabakh will have a regular flight service only with Armenia, at least in the near future. Its unresolved status makes direct air communication with other countries all but impossible. The Stepanakert Yerevan flights will be carried out from the newly renovated Stepanakert Airport by a state-run airline, Artsakh Air, beginning in 2012. Artsakh Air's fleet of aircraft will consist of three Canadian-made CRJ-200 passenger jets. Education Education in Nagorno-Karabakh is compulsory, and is free up to the age of 18. The education system is inherited from the old system of the Soviet Union. Nagorno-Karabakh's school system was severely damaged because of the conflict. But the government of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic with considerable aid from the Republic of Armenia and donations from the Armenian diaspora has rebuilt many of the schools. The Republic has around 250 schools of various sizes, with more than 200 lying in the regions. The student population estimated at more than 20,000 study, with almost half in the capital city of Stepanakert. Artsakh State University was founded by Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenian government's joint efforts with main campus in Stepanakert. The university opening ceremony took place on May 10, 1992. Yerevan University of Management also opened a branch in Stepanakert. Culture We Are Our Mountains, Armenian, by Sargis Bakdasaryan is a monument located in Stepanakert. The sculpture is widely regarded as a symbol of the de facto independent republic of Nagorno-Karabakh. It is a large monument from tuff of an old Armenian man and woman hewn from rock, representing the mountain people of Karabakh. It is also known as Tadik Yev Papik, in Eastern Armenian. The sculpture is featured prominently on Nagorno-Karabakh's coat of arms. Artsakh State Museum is the historical museum of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. Located at 4, Sasanstsi David Street in Stepanakert, 
the museum offers an assortment of ancient artifacts and Christian manuscripts. There's also more modern items, from the 19th century to World War II and from events of the Karabakh Independence War. Karabakh has its own brand of popular music. As Karabakh question became a pan-Armenian question, Karabakh music was further promoted worldwide. Also as a result of the Karabakh conflict, there has also been a series of nationalistic songs done by Karabakh artists as well as artists from Republic of Armenia and the Armenian diaspora to rally support for Karabakh independence movement accompanied by footage of Karabakh military campaigns. These can be found abundantly in popular online sites such as YouTube etc., with some lively pro and anti-Karabakh discussions that these videos almost always generate. Publications Azat Artsakh is the official newspaper of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. Sports Sports in the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic is organized by the Artsakh Ministry of Culture and Youth. Due to the non-recognition of Nagorno-Karabakh, sports teams from the country cannot compete in most international tournaments. Football is the most popular sport in Nagorno-Karabakh. Stepanakert has a well-built football stadium. Since the mid-1990s, Football teams from Karabakh started taking part in some domestic competitions in the Republic of Armenia. Lernayan Artsakh is the football club that represents the city of Stepanakert. The Artsakh Football League was launched in 2009. The Artsakh national football team was formed in 2012 and played their first competitive match against the Abkhazia national football team in Sakhumi, a match that ended with a result of 1-1 draw. The return match between the unrecognized teams took place at the Stepanakert Stadium, on October 21, 2012, when the team of Nagorno-Karabakh defeated the Abkhazian team with a result of 3-0. There is also interest in other sports, including basketball and volleyball. Sailing is practiced in the town of Martakert. Karabakh sportsmen also take part with the representing teams and athletes in the Pan-Armenian Games organized in the Republic of Armenia.